Hello, my name's Michael Oak, and I'm looking for £75,000 for 20% of my company, Bound Biographies. The people we help are primarily not looking for publishing. They're looking to write a private book for family, friends, for the sheer fun of it, a celebration. Here's some I did earlier. I help ordinary people write their life stories. But in the 18 years I've been doing this, I've yet to meet an ordinary person. We offer various services. We meet at the client's house, usually reading through what they've written between meetings. We tease out more, we edit, we structure, we proofread, we produce two lovely books for them, they can have more if they wish. They can have as many meetings as they like, they can stop at any time. There's no contracts for them to sign and the project fee is only payable at the end when they're delighted with the books. There are over 100,000 books published every year, that's 2,000 a week. We produce 40 or 50 a year and turn over £260,000. We currently have nine franchisees around the country. The plan um, is to extend the franchising network significantly and I believe you will see a return on your investment of 100% year on year. A final thought. Imagine this book here was written by your grandmother. It would talk about her parents and grandparents, your great-great-grandparents. It would also talk about her children, one of whom would be your mum or dad. Imagine if this book talked about your dad growing up. How special would that be? I would suggest if your house was burning down, it'd be one of the few things you'd grab on the way out. Thanks for your time. I look forward to your questions. It's a polished pitch from Michael Oak. He wants £75,000 to develop the franchise arm of Bound Biographies, his company that helps people write and publish their life stories. Peter Jones is intrigued. Michael? Yes. I'm Peter. Hello. Hello, Peter. Tell me about those 18 years. I think I've stumbled into one of the best jobs going. I meet some incredible people. I help them celebrate their lives. I eat their biscuits, I drink their tea, and we produce lovely books and they love it. And what do you charge? A project fee would typically be £3,000. On top of that, there's the day rate which is £300 for the day. They have as many or as few meetings as they like. The project fee is only payable at the end and clients only pay it at the end. It shows our integrity. Um, but, but, mate, you, you charge them £300 a day until the end. So if you go to their house for 20 days, yeah. you charge them £6,000. Correct. But they pay that on the day. They're aware of that. And yeah, if they're uh, enjoying well, 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 it... They're aware of it, but, you, but they're aware of it. But you can't brag that we have integrity because we don't charge them a fee until the end when you actually charge them a fee every single day. Mm. That, that's not, I'm not saying you don't have integrity. I'm saying you can't brag that that proves your integrity. Okay. But they, there's no contracts for them to sign and they can stop at any time. They are protected. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. That's not the issue. It's a testy exchange and, unfortunately for Michael, Deborah Meaden doesn't look impressed. I don't actually intrinsically like the product. I've okay. come across two okay. people who have done this. Yes. And what actually happens to them is that before they know it, they are spending a lot more money than they're expecting to spend talking to somebody, getting tea and sympathy, and these people kind of embedding themselves into their lives. And their book that they thought was going to cost them £3,000 ends up costing them £10,000. Yes. Not only are you describing it in the, exactly the same thing that mm. these two people that I know have had done and are extremely unhappy mm. about mm. it, spent mm. far more money than they expected mm. to, but you're presenting it in that way. You've got this very unusual way of talking. It's as if you've been terribly highly trained mm. in how to present and convince people. You use this sort of, you know, all of the these actions mm. that, that, you know, and you're nodding and you're blinking at me in a very heart, you know, trust me, I'm... All I'm... I can say is that the people I have worked with, nine of these people came to my wedding. I have the teddy bears my, my children get at Christmas. I mean, these people it are honorary aunts and that uncles. That doesn't help, because you're making yourself... You're buying, your, you're buying yourself into their friendship. That was exactly the criticism that these two people said. Before long, you are relying on this person as a friend for tea and sympathy. Okay. I think it can prey... It can, I agree. On, and there are a lot of people out Absolutely. there who are preying Which on is people why we who are in a vulnerable 
Correct. position. Which and is why we only select one in three, one in four who uh, come to us. Uh, because anyway, we also... we'll go on all day. Um, I'm out. It's an early blow for Michael, as a rile Deborah Meaden refuses to do business with him. Will he find solace in the company's finances? Can we talk about some numbers? What are you going to turn over next year and what profit are you going to make? Turnover next year would be 253,000. With that a profit was going to be? 217. So 217 profit? Mm. So your total cost is going to be less than £40,000 next year to run the business, including salaries? Well, that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, the plan I propose to you is just purely the franchise plan. So, am I investing in just the franchise plan or am I investing in this business? You're that you've invested had? in everything. You get everything. Okay, so start again. Okay. In everything, okay. what are you going to turn over next year? Okay, it would be. Is this, is this... 500, 516,000. 516? Yeah. And I'll ask you again, what's your net profit going to be? Well, the next profit, I suppose, would be the 30 plus the 45, which would be 75,000. Um, second year would be two hundred eighteen thousand pounds net profit. I've got two hundred and seventeen, two hundred and eighteen, seventy five pounds, five hundred and sixteen, two hundred and fifty three. I we'll only need four figures for the two years: the turnover and the profit for year one, and the turnover and profit for year two. That's all we need. Okay, five hundred and thirty. So five hundred ninety one um Hang on, Michael. Would it not be better for you <coughs> just to say, "I have not got a clue." I don't think that's entirely fair, Peter. I think we're getting... Really? I've just got about 11 different okay. numbers. OK. And you're looking in the air as if you need some sort of help. I do have an idea, but I'm not putting it across, and I apologise for that. You've made yourself completely uninvestable as a business concept, and for that reason, I'm out. I'm sorry. Thank you. An irritated Peter Jones is the second dragon to walk away from the deal. James Kahn is next to interrogate the weary entrepreneur. Mike, the uh, franchise fee, what's your franchise fee that you're charging? Well, it has been 7,500, it's going up to 10,000. OK, when did you sell the first franchise? 11 years ago. So, in 11 years, you've sold nine franchises, so you're doing one a year, roughly. It's ramped up over the last three years. It's not... It's not exciting, Mike. No, I agree, it's not exciting, but we do get a lot of interest from people who want to do this, and also... I'm glad you agree with me that it's not exciting. <laughs> it's not exciting on, it on, on a one-off number. doesn't make money, and it's got no return, okay. that it only makes money for one person. I'm glad you agree with that, Mike. No, but as I say, it's a lifestyle franchise. Mike, if this was going to take off, it would have done it by now, and I think 18 years demonstrates that this doesn't make any sense, so I'm out. Thank you, James. Thank you, Michael. Michael's bid for investment looks all but over, and Duncan Bannatyne is now ready to have his say. When did you sell, sell your last franchise? About uh, well, last week, actually. You sold one last week? Yeah. For 7500 Correct. But you came and stood in front of me and told me that you were selling franchises for 10000 What The idea is after the first ten, we're putting up to ten. It's not going to happen. It's not going to okay, happen. It's but... never going to. It's never going to happen, mate. Okay. But if, but should it? Five hundred, a hundred franchises working on five books, which is what our plans on. Mate, that's you... only five hundred books a year. Mate, you know, I think that what you're doing is good for people Thanks. who want to create a book about themselves. Fantastic. But it's not a business. So for that reason, I'm out. I've not spoken yet, Mike. But I'm going to now. Thank you. I would rather invest in an investment banker's pension than invest in this. Carry on enjoying it, because you obviously do, you've done it for 18 years. It's not something that I'm going to invest in, and I have to say, I'm out. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. I really do appreciate your time. Good luck. Michael's blown it. He failed to persuade the dragons to part with their cash, and he leaves the den with nothing. Next into the den are Somerset-based business owner, William Pryor, this no. is the right way around. And his chief executive officer, 25-year-old Fenner Leek. Oh, it's green. After you. Oh. I've had 40 years on and off in the book trade, but Fenner is the boss. But technically it's William. They're bound together by their passion for the company. What excites me is that it's a combination of a very old technology, the book, with a very new technology, the internet. So it's a fantastic meeting of ancient and modern. Just like us. 
just like <laughs> <laughs> breathing. Yeah, do it. Will the den be the start of a new chapter for the unique duo? Hello, dragons. I'm Fenelik, CEO of Bookbun International Limited. And I'm William Pryor, the chairman. Bookbun International is primarily an internet business that sells used books on a grand scale. We acquired the business in January 2013 as a turnaround project. It's now profitable, so we're here today to offer you the opportunity to invest £100,000 for 10% of our business, plus free books for life. <laughs> in 2016, the sale of printed books in the UK increased by 7.6% whilst those of consumer e-books shrank again by 2.8%. In the year to August 2016, we sold 145,000 used and rare books through 20 internet marketplaces around the world, while our one-pound bookshop contributed £147,000 in revenue in the last 12 months. As well as selling lots of used books, we also have a cafe which contributes significantly to the bottom line. In the year to August 2016, we turned over 1.27 million and made a net profit of 34,000. We've built the machine. Now your investment will enable us to grow our visitor numbers. That's visitors both to our Book Barn web store and most importantly, to our rapidly evolving rare and antiquarian book department. Darwin Rabbix, named after William's great-great-grandfather. So thank you so much for this opportunity again uh, and please we welcome any questions you may have. It's a perfectly evolved pitch from William Pryor and Fenner Leek who are asking for £100,000 for 10% of their Somerset-based book business. But in the den, where survival is always of the fittest, Peter Jones begins by exploring William's heritage. You mentioned in your pitch about a great-great-grandfather. Yes. Who's your great-great-grandfather? Darwin. For real? Yes, really. But in you shouldn't name. take any notice of that. I think that's quite big, isn't it? But it's not my achievement, though. I just happen to find myself being, <laughs> being the great-great-grandson. Wow. Can I just ask, are you related? No, okay. we're not. So how did this... I'm not being funny. <laughs> well, I am, actually. <laughs> how did this happen? Yeah, yeah. I was working as a Sunday girl in the shop, part-time, one day a week, um, and then I decided to take a gap year and it turned into a full-time job and they gave me this amazing opportunity. And how old were you when that happened? Um, 21. She's right. na now 25. That's right. Great. That's fantastic. It is fantastic. Yeah. We're, we're really blessed. Good reviews all round for the entrepreneurs. And now, former banker Jenny Campbell wants to audit their books. I love the fact that books are getting a resurgence. How many in a week will come inwards to the warehouse? We're cataloguing 5,000 a week, and then we're receiving thousands more on top. It feels like you're on the receiving end of a shoot of books <laughs> that's overwhelming you. Is it chaos? No, it's not chaos at all. It's quite orderly. Um, it feels almost cathedral-like because our stacks go so high. Um, it is quite, it's quite <laughs> no, wow. No, that's good. Yeah, can I just ask, if somebody came in and wanted to buy that stock now, what would they...? We would look for at least £2 a book. So what's the total value? Well, we... We have to confess, we don't know precisely how many books we've got. We know how many books are catalogued, which is Online. just over half a million. So approximately a million pounds worth of books. Yeah. What are your overheads? Uh, Go on. Um, so our biggest overhead is our staff costs, um, followed by our rent. Our rent is uh, 10,000 pounds a month, plus we pay a surcharge on that rent of 2,000. I should explain 2015, we went into a CVA, a company voluntary arrangement, whereby we agreed to pay our then creditors 50% over four years, which we're still doing. 
And what caused that? In 2013, when we took it over, we discovered how unfit for the business the software was and the building. So we decided we had to, if we wanted to keep the business, to change both those. We were assured by an equity broker that he could raise a quarter of a million for us. And we funded all that, believing that we had this money coming. And when it didn't come, yeah. we got into financial difficulty. And how much money is now outstanding? All the company's debts yeah. are close to 400,000. The startling revelation of substantial debts has brought the den to a standstill. And Tuka Suleiman is wondering how the entrepreneurs are managing to keep their heads above water. From what I can see, you did 1.27 turnover. Yes. You made 34,000 profit. Yes. It'll take you about 12 years to pay off your debt at that rate. We are um, increasing our revenue all the time, so hopefully our debt repayment speed will increase. Um, yeah. Fenner, you come across very credible you come across very knowledgeable. And when you said your age, <laughs> I was taken aback. However, th there are too many skeletons in the cupboard. It's not clean. I'm not gonna be on that journey with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm out. Tuka Suleiman is the first dragon to ditch the deal. Uncomfortable with the burden of debt, hanging over the book company. Will Jenny Campbell, with a track record in business turnarounds, be on the same page? William Fenner, what concerns me? You bought something, you got keys to the door, but it wasn't all well, was it, when you no. lifted the carpet, which then dragged you down and you went into the, into the CVA. I think you've got the next three, four, five years to really see the light at the end of the tunnel and some more hard spade work before that happens. Yeah. So it's not an investment for me at this stage. And I'm out. OK. I am very concerned that £100,000 is not going to achieve what you want it to achieve because you are starting from behind. It buys you time, it buys you some cash flow, but it still gets eaten up there. And that, to me, is just one step too far. I'm out. When I invest in businesses, it's got to be fairly simple. With your business, there are so many things that need to be sort of dealt with before you can really focus on the growth and putting money in, that's a, a key risk. I don't see I'm going to get a return anytime quick, uh, so therefore I'm out. OK. Thank you. Tej Lalvani is the fourth dragon to close the book on the business opportunity. Only Peter Jones remains, and he's still finding the story of William's ancestry a real page-turner. But is it enough to make him invest. William, um, when you say you're the great-great-grandson of Darwin, <laughs> yes. you are talking Charles Darwin, I'm aren't you? I'm talking Charles Darwin. <laughs> I'll give you the full lineage, shall I? Charles Darwin was the father. He had five sons, and one of those, the third, was Sir George Darwin, who was my great-grandfather. His eldest daughter was Gwen. She was my grandmother, so I'm a Darwin even though my surname is not Darwin. It is a tough one. I think you've, you've done a really good thing to keep potentially the business alive and allow creditors to at least receive a large proportion of their money back. Yeah. Where I'm sitting, if you've got a million pounds worth of stock, yeah. even if you're selling them at a much lower price, I would have wholesaled several hundred thousand of my books to pay back those creditors, to take it back out of a CVA, get your company back and get ownership and drive that online business. Because if you've got six or seven hundred thousand pounds worth of stock left, you could spend time tweaking it and actually making more margin. And that for an investor is really exciting. And if you'd focus purely on that element of the business. I would have got over the line. 
So I'm out. But I wish you the very best of luck, and I hope Thank it you. all works out. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Despite several plot twists, the duo couldn't stop their descent into rejection, and they leave the den without a deal. It's a shame about the uh, the complications, but otherwise it's quite a nice business. Yeah. Nice to see books still selling and still alive. Yeah. It was a good reception, just by the outcome. Yeah. Okay. We're happy with that. Are we? Are we? Yes, we're happy with that. <laughs> I'm feeling excited, obviously we want to get this out to the world, and that's why we're here today, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, mate, we've got to smash this now. Bang. We're very confident about the product and about our ability as well. The pumped up pair have their sights firmly set on one particular dragon. We feel that we could work best with, with, with Deborah, really, and, and hopefully we make an impression on her. Here we go. The little dragon opened his eyes. <gasps> the sun was high up in the sky. He jumped straight out of bed, put on his socks, then raced out of the door as fast as he could, joining his friends on their way to the Dragon Academy. Welcome to Yatbox, the future of reading for children. We're here today to ask for an investment of uh, £100,000 uh, in return for 5% equity in the company. Uh, with me is Ben, the founder of the Yapbooks app, and my name's Lee, and I focus on the marketing and communication for the business. So Yapbooks is a first-to-market, voice-enhanced reading and learning app for children, encouraging them to read stories aloud, triggering animations and sound effects perfectly in time with their words and imagination, creating a much more interactive reading experience for thousands of children worldwide. So I started Yap Books to help my son with his speech development, creating a simple prototype where he could see a response to his words by being able to trigger animations on voice. And this helped to encourage his speech, giving him the confidence to read aloud. And now Yap Books is making a big impact on the ed tech sector, earning itself five prestigious awards in its first year. Now we intend to monetize our product for the introduction of in-app book purchases, book vouchers, and reading subscriptions for homes and schools. And that's why we're here today, to ask for your support and investment in order to get this out to as many different children as we can. Thanks for your time. A voice-enhanced reading app for children is the offering from Ben Ridgway and Lee Johnson, who are seeking £100,000 in return for a 5% share in their company. So how will the duo's attempt to synthesise screen time with study sit with multi-millionaire mum, Sarah Davies? Ben, Lee. Hiya. Hiya. My thing with my six-year-old is I struggle to get him to concentrate. And I really would struggle with him concentrating on the words and not what was going on on the screen. Have you had that feedback much? You'd have to have to ask a kid really, whether they oh, I'm enjoy I'm sure that, yeah. my six-year-old would love to do that. Well, that... But, I mean, Craig, it takes know... us half an hour to get through a 20-page book as it is. You know, we could be there all night. Yeah, yeah. Well, leave, leave them alone with it. They'll do it themselves and you'll get the report. Kids are hooked on these things. And it's not only about the book, it's about what new value this brings. So how can we increase comprehension? We can show them animation. We can show them a different unfolding of a story. So we can create smarter kids. So these children that are watching YouTube and sat and watching video after video, they've got that educational purpose to it now. And also there's no cheating with it as well. They don't get that animation and reward until they do the hard work of reading. And that's the right way around of doing learning. Ben and Lee believe that technology could hold the key to transforming reluctant readers into lifelong lovers of literature. But Tuka Suleiman is focused less on words and more on numbers. So as far as your accounts are concerned, have you done a full year? We're pre-revenue launch in January. So your pre-revenue valued at how much? Two million. Yeah. It's a bit spicy, as I call it. <laughs> We're looking at a marketplace of 4.5 million children in the UK. 
we're aiming to get to 5% of that, and I feel that we can get to that because we have a unique product in the marketplace. And your revenue model? Well, our revenue model is subscriptions. And what do you think a, a parent will pay? $3.99 for a single reader subscription and $7.99 for a family. But as a family, do I expect my child to continue month after month after month after month reading this way? Or do I want them to move on to reading a normal book out loud? Yeah. Which means after I've had the child do it for a month, two months, three months, I'm going to unsubscribe. No, I don't... I, I, why, why would you well, do that? Because I'm now putting them on the journey to picking up a proper book. I completely understand where you're saying that children... And we know that, that children will progress on to older books and start reading, you know, traditional books or, or, or e-books if they need to. But we can put bigger books in there, you know, for older children. You know, there's a possibility to do that. Okay. In your financial model, what's the lifespan of a subscriber? Primary age children. How which many? No, 4.5 no, million no, that's, in the not, UK. that's your target audience. What's your lifespan of a subscriber? So, our number is based on what we provide in the curriculum. So, we provide books from four up to eight. What that is, goes through early What years. is the number? I Just give me the number. The lifespan of a subscriber in your business model. Five years. You just made that five years up, didn't you? Well, it's dependent on the content that we are putting in. We're, we're, we're covering no, yeah, the primary... You did, you yeah, did, you did. didn't you? Literally, you just went, Ben. Five years? The dragons have never been fans of fairy tales, and Deborah Meaden believes that Ben has strayed into the realm of fiction. Now, Tej Lalvani wants to discover more about the duo's plans to make mastering your ABCs an investment opportunity with the X Factor. Ben and Lee, I think it's a good product in emerging technology. The experience is immersive, which is, which is good. But you've not got sales through it, though. We've not monetized the product yet. We've, we've had interest and we've had people sign up, but as yet, we've had no um, in-app purchases. Lee, you said you got people signed up. We've got 70,000 70, users on the platform. How many of the 70,000 are active users? So we've got 3,000. Guys, I've been on the fence, and you've just said something which made my decision for me. So you've got 70,000 people have access to this for free, and less than 5% of those are making use of it. So that makes me think about, well, what proportion of these people are going to use it if they're paying 3 99 That statistic for me was the, I'm off the fence and not on the side that you wanted me to be on. So I'm okay. going to say those words. Yeah, that's fine. I'm out. Ben and Lee have lost their first dragon, as the low take-up rate on their free samples causes Sarah Davies to decline the deal. The pair have already succeeded in making an impression on their dragon of choice. But will she share their vision for the future of learning? This is clearly the way things are going to be going anyway, because whether we like or we don't, children are spending more time on screens. So I'm kind of bought into the idea. The question is, is this the one? My kid's a brilliant reader now that we've done this. But if we can do that and we can encourage children to read, what parents is going to want to better their child's future? So, um, why are you still pre-revenue? I've held back on rushing it to market to, to start to monetize it. Uh, because I think when you have a product that doesn't fail, it's going to, um, we're going to get attraction quicker. Ben, I need to stop you you're going into sale, you're, you're, you're moving into sales mode, which is not surprising, it's your product, you're very um, passionate about it. But when does the button get pressed? When are you going to take your first pound? Tomorrow? Oh, no, you just did that thing you did to Theo earlier. I mean, no. it's ready. What I'm trying to say is it's ready. No, We've put the time no. in. Different question. I get it's ready. When do you take your first £3.99? 
You said January. Tuka, Tuka, can you just... Tuka, I don't want your answers. I don't want to know what... I want Ben to answer a straight question. I'm trying to say, look, what I'm trying to tell you is technically that product is ready. But if we just plan it properly, yes, January... Ben, I've got to tell you, when you go back into the big wide world, you're going to have to learn how you present to an investor and they don't just want the shiny answer. They want to understand the actual path. And you haven't really put that across to me today. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. I'm OK, out. thank you. OK, thank you. A second dragon bows out as Ben's failure to give chapter and verse on the business prompts Deborah Meaden to read the Riot Act. Will Tej Lalvani be prepared to prioritise a promising piece of tech over an imperfect pitch? Guys, I really think you've got a good product here and I think it can do really well. It's a shame because I just think you guys haven't represented yourselves good enough coming here. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm out. I'm dyslexic. So for me, my saviour was as soon as computers came out, I learned to program because I could use them to get over my limitations. So I actually like the idea of the product. But frankly, I can't just give you £100,000 because I like the product. You've got a muddled business plan. You contradict yourselves. And I'd be trusting you to run the business. What you're seeing is, is, is crea a creative people here that know how to create products for children. And with the right people involved, we can get this to a mass market. I am going to stick to my principles because I think you're going to be high maintenance. I don't have to spend too much time, which I can ill afford. I can afford the money, but I cannot afford the time. And for that reason, regretfully, I'm going to say I'm out. Four dragons have closed their books on a deal. The entrepreneur's hopes now rest solely with Tuka Suleiman. Has the high street high roller read between the lines to reveal an opportunity others have missed? Guys, I've listened to everything. And the big thing you've all missed out is retail. Because I see the vision in a way to build a product that's physical in their homes and they use every day. It, whether it's a lullaby to put their baby to bed, you know, or whether it's whatever. You know, that's my vision. So I'm going to make you an offer. But it comes at a price. I'll give you all the money, but I want 25%. Do you want to have a chat about it? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Okay. yeah. OK, just one second. A £100,000 offer for Ben and Lee. What do you think? What do you think? Albeit in exchange for five times more equity than the 5% share the pair were originally looking to give away. <clears throat> Thanks for your interest, obviously, in the, in the products. Uh, but I think, uh, at this point, we'll, we'll refuse the investment. Fine. On that basis, I'm out. Well, I appreciate being time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Ben and Lee's reluctance to shake on a deal has written off the prospects of a dragon investing in their reading app. Despite a late plot twist courtesy of Tuka Suleiman, the story of their visit to the den doesn't end with a happily ever after. Got to remember that sometimes we see differently than a dragon. Obviously, these things can go as you plan or not as you plan, you know, depending on what happens in the day and how the conversation goes. If you come in with a two million valuation pre-revenue asking for 100 grand, I think that's absolutely the sort of discussions they need to be prepared to have with investors. The offer was just not really in the ballpark of where we wanted to be. We know that voice technology is growing and developing, and, and we know we can take this far um, without a dragon's involvement. It 
It's a brave person that enters the den with a business that firmly targets, but also just as firmly excludes, one half of society. But that's exactly what our next entrepreneur is presenting to the Dragons. Brave Girls Book Club. I'm a mum of boys. That's not speaking to me. What we have to offer is a very exciting and dynamic product in a fast-moving market. Molly Masters may have a very specific audience in mind, but she's less sure about her strategy in the den. I don't think I have a game plan. <laughs> Just hopefully land a dragon. Hello dragons, my name is Molly Masters and I'm the founder of Books That Matter. I'm here today to ask for £50,000 investment in exchange for 5% of my business. The current English GCSE curriculum offers a choice of 25 available books for study. Only five are by women. If women and girls cannot see themselves represented at school, in the media and on the bookshelves, then we have to take matters into our own hands. 75% of book buyers are in fact women. So with Books That Matter is an award-winning book subscription box putting women's writing in the spotlight through unique reading experiences. We have turned over over £800,000 to date. We have a dedicated online following of over 50,000 people who get involved in our bookish conversations on our book club style platforms. We've also recently launched our Brave Girls Book Club for girls between the ages of 8 to 12. You will find some boxes inside your boxes for you to have a look at. Thank you so much for your time. A book subscription box service that aims to empower and inspire women and girls is the proposition from Molly Masters. Your pitch, did it go as well as planned? That was the best I've done it, I think. Thank you. No, well done. Oh. She's asking for £50,000 in return for 5% of her company. Dad of four girls, Peter Jones, is first to quiz the female literature flag bearer. So, really interesting. I had no idea 80% of books at GCSE level written by guys. Yes. And you said 75% of, of women? Of book buyers are women. Well, there's the opportunity, isn't it? Yes. Um, <laughs> so how does it work in terms of subscription? So we have options for a monthly rolling subscription, which is our most popular option. So How much is that? £17. And then our multi-month subscriptions, which are three, six and 12 months, are £15 a month. And what do I get then every month? One book by female authorship and at least three gifts from independent female creatives and artists. OK, I want to get into the detail of where the business is today. What have you turned over in the last 12 months? So that would be £356,000 and a net of 62000 And over the next 12 months, what is your forecast for the next 12? We're at year three now. So our modest forecast um, is £1 million for um, turnover for year four, £1.6 for year five, and year six is £2 million turnover. OK, and how much have you put into the business? Um, I have my due diligence here if you would like me to check it. No, no, my due diligence is you. How much, how much is that? I, I don't, I wouldn't have a figure off the top of my head, but around £10,000. No, how much money do you have left? Um, we have 200000 in the bank. How much? 200000 Molly keeps her cool and reveals a healthy bank balance built from humble beginnings. But it seems that Deborah Meaden has some concerns about the sizeable slice of the market that she might be missing out on. So, I mean, I, I obviously love the um, promotion, certainly, of women. But why would you restrict your audience it just seems to me a little bit of a shame. If you're trying to open a window to female authors, why would you target your audience so heavily towards women? Because okay. that excludes a huge chunk. I perhaps wouldn't say that the ultimate purpose is to level the playing field, because my opinion is it's to amplify voices. And I think women being the biggest book buyers are the receptors of that we can see the value in it being a unique female-only space. 
I don't know, I'm feeling a little disappointed about the Brave. Th this pink one here, it's got lipstick in it and it's all very excluding. I mean, you know, Sarah, you've got boys. Uh, I've got you've... two boys and my boys wouldn't want to read books that came out of a pink box. No. So I guess you are excluding me as a consumer. And, and that might be purposeful and you're wanting to apply it to a niche, but I think that's possibly the point Deborah was getting at yeah, there. Yeah, no, of course. It's a big audience mix. I think we're trying to combine the feminist with the feminine and that there's maybe nothing wrong with that being front and centre. I just feel that it, it's, it speaks directly to women and, and that's where we're at. Pink isn't making the dragons wink as Deborah Meaden and Sarah Davies wonder if Molly's feminine boxes are a marketing mistake. However, Tuka Suleiman is rather taken with the entrepreneur's endeavours so far. It's very impressive that with very little money, you've started the business, you've got subscribers, you should be proud of yourself. I have an online women's magazine, and at the moment, we provide that content for free. And I'm just wondering whether, uh, are you predominantly selling books? Or do you think that if you provide a different content, that would add value to your business? Yeah, definitely. There's so much content that we would love. We do a blog already, but yep. in terms of lifestyle content, which I guess is what you're getting at, I think that would be a way to also just yep. break through that barrier of it just being about the book club. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you agree with that. Molly, on Instagram, there's a number of female book clubs. Mm -hmm. What is it that separates you from that type of competition? I think the exclusive partnerships after having such growth and such opportunities with publishers, I think we're now seen as the market leader. We get kind of first look at things like Sally Rooney's next book, things like that, that just aren't being offered to our competitors. Okay. Molly, I, I like this, but, but I think that's the problem. I like it, I don't love it. You've made me feel compelled to address my own behaviours yes. by making a conscious effort to maybe buy more female authors, but you haven't made me compelled to want to invest in you. So for that reason, it's not one for me today, and I'm out. Sarah Davies closes the book on investment and the entrepreneur loses her first dragon. And it appears Molly's open approach of targeting women and girls has also sidelined Deborah Meaden. Molly, I'm going to follow up quite quickly with that. Of course I want to bring a spotlight onto more female authors, but I don't want to do it in a way that I see as more divisive. It drives us more into saying male, female. So I'm afraid, Molly, for, for that reason, um, the good news is it's not because you haven't got a good business, but it's because I can't buy into the ethos of it. I won't be investing, so I'm out. Thank you. Molly, I don't agree. I just love what you've done. And I can clearly see that you're on a cusp of a movement here that ultimately could have a paradigm shift. I'm contemplating it because Tuka's about to make you an offer. Um, Am I? You're 100% going to make an offer, Tuka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm going to invest, so don't let me put you off and make an offer, guys. It's, it's actually quite a tough one. Mm. Um, there's lots of things I think that you can do with this. But even if you end up hitting your million and your 1.6, which is a massive challenge, that still would mean even if I had 20, 25% of the business, I'm kind of bordering on just getting my money back over three years, and that's the risk factor. So I'm going to politely decline and say I'm out. Peter Jones mulls over an offer, but decides the rewards don't outweigh the risk and becomes the third dragon to depart. Tuka Suleiman has already sounded out a possible way to boost Molly's business. Will he offer some financial support and sound out a deal? I'm contemplating how I can add value. 
You've got a business that makes money. At 5%, really, the problem is, I'm not going to get my money back that easily. Um, but I'm going to make you an offer. I'll give you the whole 50,000, but I want 30%. But I'll also let Stephen share, if he wants to share with me, okay. for 15%. Thank you so much. I think what you've done is phenomenally impressive. I, I just love when I meet entrepreneurs that have a real sense of mission behind their work. I think your branding is amazing. I understand your business. I know the space. However, I don't think that for the effort that I'd have to put in, I could possibly make a return that would make that worthwhile. And so I thank Tuka for the invitation, but unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm out. Okay. But I'm also going to say that I don't think you should give away 30% of your business for 50 grand. Thank you. It's now time for the wall. <laughs> wall time. Hey, thank you. Molly has one offer to consider, but in return for his £50,000, Tuka Suleiman is asking for six times the 5% of equity that was originally on the table. Will she take those terms or try to negotiate? OK. <clears throat> So thankful for your offer, but the maximum that I wanted to give away from the business was between 10 to 15. Is there any way you would...? The problem is, the return that I would get, it would take far too long. I, I would say I would have to stick to where I am. Then I would have to say that I'll have to decline. In that case, I would take the knock on the chin like a gentleman. Thank you so much. Okay, thank well you. Done. Thanks, thank Molly. You. Well done. Good luck with it, Molly. Well done. Thank you. Great pitch. Well. Tuka Suleiman refuses to reduce his terms, which are too much for Molly, and she leaves the den without a deal. I always said coming in here that if I was given an offer, I wouldn't walk away, but I do think that the percentage that was asked was just a bit too high. Tuka, we can read you like a book. We knew you were going to make an yeah, offer. Yeah, yeah, when you said that, I was <laughs> OK, I'd better put on my poker face then. You haven't Is got that a your poker, poker face. face. <laughs> Who do you think looks the meanest? Sarah looks pretty tough for someone who's into crafts. Next into the den are Rutger Bruning and Theo Brainin, who are hoping a Dragon's investment today will open a new chapter in their book-related business. Stories are very important to me, and it's not just any story. It's about your family story and where you come from. Well, there's my book. Wow, look at that. This is cool. We think we've got a pretty, you know, unique idea, unique product to bring into the den, so it'll be really interesting to see how they react. Do you think it's got anything to do with books? Hi. My name is Rutger. I'm the founder and CEO of Storyterrors. And this is Theo, our marketing director. Storyterrors helps people to turn their life story into a book using a professional writer. First, we match our customers with a writer. Second, the writer interviews the customer face-to-face -face at home and writes their story. Third, when the customer is completely happy with their story, then we combine it with their favorite family photographs and print a beautiful hardbound book like this one, which I'm proud to say records my mum's life story. Since launching in the UK, the US and the Netherlands, we've sold over 750 packages worth well more than two million pounds. But our ambition is much bigger than that. We want to make sure that everyone gets the opportunity to capture their life story in the future. We're here to raise £90,000 in exchange for 2% of our business as part of our plan to almost double our sales this year. We'll be happy to take your questions, but first we have a small gift for each of you. A word perfect pitch by Rutger Bruning. Thank you. And Theo Brainin. They're looking for a £90,000 investment. I love a present. <laughs> in return for a 2% stake in their company that produces bespoke biographies. 
we've got one sample book for you and then we've done a little mock-up of what we think your book could look like. And some empty pages because there's still stuff to do yet. Of Lots. course. Crafting Queen Sarah Davies wants to delve deeper into the story behind Rutger's reason for creating this novel business. Guys. Yes. Emotionally, you got me right at the pitch. There's obviously something that's had you get to this point in this business and I'd be really interested to know what that is. Um, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, specifically with my grandfather. And while he would smoke cigars, he would tell me stories about being in the resistance in the Netherlands. And um, I love my grandparents more than anyone. But in the last years of their lives, I spent less time with them. And I think that made the regret even stronger that I didn't record their life stories. And then one of my best friends, um, he passed away and I thought, this is the time. And I have to do my business. And uh, then I started. Look, I like the concept. I think you've touched on something really interesting. How much does it cost you for one book? So if you take an average sale of 3,300, then we have about 1,300 direct costs, most of which is going on the writer. It would leave us with 1,500, basically, afterwards. So 50% gross margin. Yeah. yeah. And so the plan is to grow in the US more significantly. Any other markets that you're looking at? No, the US is growing incredibly fast. Um, so actually, we want to get the platform fully online, which makes us more efficient. And then we can add other languages from there. Impressive margins and a streamlined plan to crack the US are a surefire way to earn rave reviews in the den. Now, Deborah Meaden wants more hard stats on the potential of these hardbacks. So, the turnover of 1.8 million, is that from start? To date, we've done over 2 million since the start. OK, so are you generating any profit at the moment? No, we're generating a, a loss of around 40,000 a month. A month? 40,000 a month? Yeah. OK, so what's your accumulated losses to date? Um, 1 point, 1 point 1.5. So you still got cash? We have more than 100,000 in cash and we have commitments from existing shareholders for additional funding. How many shareholders? There are sort of 40 angel investors and then around 260 people through crowdfunding. So the, you're valuing the company today at 4.5 million, business that's lost 1.5 million and you're running out of funds in two months time. No, we're, we're not running out of funds in two months time. I thought you said you have a burn rate of 40K a month and you've only got 100K left. We have a plan to raise more money. You want to raise more money. How much more money do you believe yes. you want to raise? Uh, two million. And would that be further dilution again for the existing shareholder base? Yes. So if I invest today, I'm guaranteed to have less equity tomorrow. Well, it, actually, we're, we're looking for sort of long-term shareholders and uh, no, hopefully... No, that just, that's really important to me that you and I both, we understand that. Yeah, we're, we're very transparent about what our No, that, that was a yes or no answer, but then well, if you want to be transparent. Well, it depends if you follow on your investment. Um, well, no, 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 if that's only if I put more money in. Yes, correct. I think there's a, there's a book we could write about that. Peter Jones clearly spells out to the entrepreneurs what he thinks of the prospect of future share dilution. And the news of the company's ambitions across the pond has given Tuka Suleiman ideas on how the pair could make some big bucks. Look, I mean, it's very simple. I mean, the US is a big market. They love all this. If you linked up with every golf club across the US, you had access to their members, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't need to spend so much on marketing. It's what you call smart money. If I was on board, I want to know that I'm not being diluted on a continuous basis. I can do my charity work to much better causes. I don't need to get you guys out of trouble, because at the moment you're in trouble. No, there is, you know, for the additional support that you provide, um, there is additional equity that we, we could give away. Advisory shares? Yes. So what percent of advisors can you give away? Well, I, I don't want to... Well, I mean, here it I Depends am. how much advice you'll give, Tuka. I can give lots of advice, I can assure you. The Dragon's fears of future shrinking stakes in the business are momentarily sidestepped 
with the offer of non-dilutable advisory shares in return for their expertise. But will the proposal be enough to tempt Peter Jones back on board? Um, guys, I'm going to say where I am it is so far away from where I want to be as an investor on such a small return with such a high risk for such a large amount of money. If things don't go well for you in the next nine months, all of this dream dissipates. So for me, I'm going to say I'm out. This particular investment tale comes to an end for Peter Jones as he becomes the first dragon out. The entrepreneurs have given Deborah Meaden her own book, but will she author an offer? So there are lots of different style of investments. There's the ones where you just put the money in, um, and there are the ones where you feel you can make a big difference. I'm not sure this is my style of investment because I want to probably get in a bit more. So in this instance, I won't be an investor. I'm afraid I'm out. I came here to the den to find businesses that I could take a significantly bigger chunk of the mm -hmm. pie to get hands on. And I'm worried that there isn't that opportunity to do that in this business. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you, I am out, however, I will absolutely be a customer of yours in future. With two more dragons out in quick succession is the writing on the wall for the entrepreneurs. Or will Tej Lalvani be prepared to make an offer and become part of their business story? So guys, um, I love this idea, right, and I think it can go a long, long way. You can build a massive company. And I love the mission. I'll tell you where I can help you. Um, one is definitely the digital marketing side of things. And I think with funding, it's very important as well. Getting the right collection of investors, these are all the areas I can add value to. What I'm prepared to do is offer you all the money for 5%, but I want 2.5% advisory shares on top. So I'm not diluted down. Okay, thank you for the offer. Thank you. <clears throat> Finally, a bid. But Tej Lalvani wants a total of 7.5% of the business, with a third of that in the form of undilutable advisory shares. But with only 2% of the firm on offer from the duo, will Tuka Suleiman be prepared to come up with a better deal? I, I like it. However, my idea would be clever contacts. Clever contacts come at a price. I would give you all of the money, but I want 7.5%, but only 2% of that can be diluted going forward. Um, shall we, take we need to have a chat, I think. Yeah. Chat yeah. to the wall. Tuka Suleiman matches Tej Lalvani's overall 7.5% bid. But he wants the majority of his shares to be non-dilutable. And where, and where do you think is the maximum, though, we would have, I don't know if we can move. Both offers are massively over the 2% that Rutger and Theo wanted to give away. The pair will have to negotiate hard if they want to strike a deal. What I would um, propose is to stay on the 2% the equity plus 2%, making it 4%. And on the advisory shares, um, I can make those non-dilutive. Guys, I think you undervalue what I can bring to the party. If I take your offer, I'm undervaluing 45 years of working experience, and I have too much respect for myself. You know, that is my final offer. I can't go to that level, I have to be honest. Then, on that basis, I'm out. So, I can't do what you said, but what I, what I can do is 4% and 2% advisory shares on top.
I have to say that five is, is then, that's, oh that's the max I can do. Okay, I'll do 5%, but not to be diluted at the next round, all that 5%. It's a great deal, guys. Yeah, then let's do it. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Good yeah. work. <laughs> well oh, done. That was hard work. <laughs> Got there in the end. I feel like I want to come for a hug too. <laughs> it's not my investment, but congratulations. Thank you. After tense negotiations, Rutger and Theo get the 90,000 they were looking for and embark on a new chapter in their business with Tej Lalvani and his dragon expertise. <laughs> it wasn't a straightforward deal, but even complicated deals get done. We got there in the end. It feels pretty great to walk away with Tej. It's really exciting and it's exactly what we wanted. Well done, I think you carved yourself out a nice little deal there. Yeah. yeah. As long as you don't come to us for the fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>